Well, hey guys, Captain Cook here. Now, what you're looking at here, of course, I'm standing on the beach. And why, why we're calling this a director's commentary is because my GoPro failed me. Yeah, I lost all my audio from this day of fishing. But luckily, I had a Tacticam fisheye set up that was filming the whole thing, and it filmed my whole trip. So I lost all the audio. So we're just going to do a commentary and tell you what's going on. Now, here you're looking at, I'm on the beach. This is my opening. This is my intro into what we're doing. And we'll just roll with it. All right? We're just going to roll with it. Well, hey, guys. Welcome back. So here we go. We're, we're talking. I just shot over to over Thompson Beach, Beach. A quick trip coming over. Uh, we're going to check things out. Beautiful it's day. Pretty nice down no here. No wind today. whatsoever. Literally no wind. And we're going to get some baits in the water. So we're going to get some baits out in the water and see what happens. Um, ocean is, you know, not too bad. Now here you can see me. I run across, cut my chest on. Doesn't do any good. And I, I got a weird angle on my, my uh, Tacticam right now. You don't see the other rod, but you'll see me come in. And this is my first fish of the day. Not real early, seven fifteen maybe. Not sure. Uh, let me look. Probably tell you what exactly what time it was it was about 7 20 ish is what it was so bringing in my first fish first fish of the day that's that's, that's probably the most exciting one uh i've got a 10 foot and this is just a little you can see it's a little whiting watch what happens bam falls off if I had not kept tension on him on bringing him in, that would happen out in the water. Wouldn't have had a fish. Um, he's barely hooked. He wasn't hooked real good. But as soon as that tension got off of him, he shook a little bit. Hook just came right out. But that was my first fish of the day. It wasn't a gigantic whiting. It was a little whiting. Um, but I put him in the cooler to bring him home. Here's my second fish. You can see the sun's a little higher. It's a little later in the morning. Um, and a majority of my my uh, fish I caught were on that 10-foot H2O Express. I had a pompano rig with some shrimp, fresh shrimp, fresh dead shrimp, on a Cast King 5000 Sharky 3 bait runner and this is a better whiting but watch what happens mm, not the one thought it was going to come off <laughs> I got another one that pops off as well I drop him a couple of times but another another whiting to go in the cooler and as you can see like I was saying most of them came from this this setup and I think it is from the color of the uh, floats I had on it. Uh, here's another one. Now, on this one, I had orange and green floats, top and bottom. The one on the left, I had a orange and green on the bottom, but a blue and white float on the top. So, you know, 98% of my catches come off that one on the right. And they were mostly on the bottom, the two-drop rig. They were on the bottom. So here's a little better. I think there's a little better whiting, if I'm not mistaken. First time I've, did, I've done a commentary while I'm watching the video. But, um, yeah, so I think this is where it's at. This is a little better whiting. And you see, as soon as I grab the leader, shakes, falls off. And this is a good whiting. And and I knew when I got him up there, he wouldn't hook real well. He's slimy, too. And the fish are very cold because the water is extremely cold still. Hadn't warmed up a lot. We hadn't, had a, we hadn't had a lot of hot days. And as you can see, as I approach the cooler with this guy, he's a good size. Uh, 
put them in the cooler for dinner. Now here we go on the on the left. I have a this rod is a nine foot Fiblink Moon Sniper, and this is the one I have a blue and white float and a green and orange. Uh, this is the first fish I caught off of this setup, and it's a small whiting. But I really think uh, the color had a lot to do with it. And as you can see, looks like he may have hit, he may hit that top one, that blue and white. But just a little one, we'll throw him in the cooler with the rest of them. Now we, we, we keep rolling on this one because I'm trying to get this one set up on the left. And you can look at my rod on the right. I started getting some taps, and then you can see the bend in it. So that that's how it went more or less all day. You you think that the bite is hot, and it would be bam bam two fish, and then it would stop, and bam bam two fish, and that's kind of how it went. It wasn't a constant thing, and that's that's kind of how I like it, you know. Uh, I'm wore out from from that day down there anyway, and but it was bam bam, a little break, bam bam, a little break. But all in all, it was a good day. I think this is a decent whiting. Um, yeah, wait a minute, that is no, oh, that's a flounder. So I did catch, uh, this would be a keeper flounder, but of course in North Carolina our season is closed, doesn't open back up to August or September. And I would have loved to bring this guy home. And I'm actually talking to a local that came up, and we're talking about flounder and But you know, I had to uh had to cut him loose. And that was uh man, I would love to keep that fish right there. He was a nice little thick flounder. He was he was shorter, but he was really thick. And I'm just complaining to this guy about, you know, not being able to keep these flounder and being only being able to keep him for two weeks out of the year. So this is a toothy critter, so I'm gonna get my lip grip and a set of pliers and as you can see i'm fumbling trying to get trying to get that lip grip in his mouth because he was actually hooked through both lips i was fishing with a circle hook so it didn't grab the corner of his mouth it grabbed right straight out in front and it actually hooked both top and bottom so it was kind of a kind of a trick to get that lip grip but i finally did Got my pliers in there, pulled the hook out, I put my pliers back, and we're going to walk him back down, down to the water's edge and let this poor fellow go. He could have been dinner tonight, but that's okay. So we're going to set him free, and we'll see what we got coming up next. Now, you see, I got my camera angle a little better. You, you can actually see them. There we go. On that rod again, I got another good fish. Um, and the good thing about these circle hooks, you know, you, you, you don't have to, man, you know, a lot of people call it a, a, a bill dance hook set. You know, you just about yanking the, the hook, and that's actually what will happen. Is yanking that that hook out of the fish's mouth. When you're fishing with these circle hooks, put a little pressure on it. the hook. The hook is designed uh, to, to hook him up in the corner of that mouth. So you don't need a great hook set when you're fishing with these these circle hooks, and that's why I like them. Now there's advantages and disadvantages, and some say you lose a lot of fish. I didn't lose any fish today. That they got. Uh, I had some bait sealers come in, bam, just a quick little hit. Uh, here's a decent whiting. 
It's not bad. It's not a giant by any means. But it's not it's not a bad one. It's a keeper for sure. And so we'll we'll get the hook out of his mouth. Very easy. You see how simple bam. Hook comes out. Drop him, kicks mud all over me. But uh, not a bad fish. Not a bad fish. He was uh, very lively. Put him in the cooler. So here we go again on that same rod. Another fish. And what I'm fishing is there's a sandbar out there. And I'm fishing in the first cut. So as you can see, these waves break. Then they calm down. Then they break again. Now, from the first break to the second break, I'm right in there. I'm not out very far. Not out very far. So I'm fishing that first cut. And that's where I'm catching these fish at. I don't go any further out. I don't try to get on the other side of the sandbar. I'm fishing that first cut. That first trough right there. That's all I'm doing. I don't have to cast it very far. This is another decent whiting. I'm just fishing fresh dead shrimp uh, I tried some fish gum on with it didn't really need it you know I was, I was, I was using the fish gum just really kind of hold the bait on but the shrimp did well fresh dead shrimp did well not a bad whiting you know good 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 eating size so I think here, what's happening here? Now here, my line went slack. That really then that'll indicate you got a hit, you got a bite, it's swimming towards you. But acted kind of funny. You see me put it back in the the uh, rod holder, and then I pick it up again. All right, so now I feel it. I got some weight on it, and I have a. I got a fish on. Now the way it's acting, I'm thinking. I may have another flounder on. The way it's acting is swimming towards me. Uh, not a lot of head shakes. Like it's, you know, trying to stick to the bottom. But you'll see my reaction here when I see what it is. And you can see. You see my head dip and, yeah, we got a stingray. But that's okay. You know, we, we've had a good day. So now I got to get this thing off my hook and get him back out there. Um, I don't particularly care about eating these guys. But, uh, you'll see. I'll, I'll get him unhooked and pick him up by his tail. Carry him back down to the water and get set up for another one. Um, but that's all right, you know. You, you, you've got to expect to catch, you know, little sharks or or, or stingrays and stuff like that. Now here, um, when things get slow, you know, you got your set rigs out. When things get slow, you got to try something else. You got to, you know. So I'm I'm going out right now. I've got a, uh, a gold spoon on, and I'm just going to chunk this thing as far as I can and bring it in and see if I can pick up, uh, you know, a blue coming by or something. So I'm not just going to sit back and watch these two, these set rods just sit there and do nothing. Hell, let's make something happen. So in between where I was getting bites, I'm going to I'm gonna cast it and see if we can pick up something that way. You know, keep, keep doing something. Just don't sit there and stare at those rods. Keep doing something. And right here, we're leaving the beach. I'm running. 
not really. I'm just speeding it up a little bit, but that was it for the day. We're we're running back and going back to the truck, we're loading up and heading back home with uh, a decent amount of fish in the cooler and bringing them home and going to clean them up and going to eat good tonight. So guys, that's what I've got for this week. I do thank you guys for joining me. Uh, we may try it again tomorrow. I was uh, debating on whether going surf fishing or taking a kayak out and maybe hitting some creeks around the marsh areas and the backside. But I don't know if it's going to be like this tomorrow on the beach. I may just go back to the beach. Uh, a, little, a lot of work, you know, getting everything ready and uh, getting everything packed up. But uh, everything's already packed up to go surf fishing, so we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. We'll we'll see tomorrow. But like I said, guys, thanks for joining me, and uh, be sure to join me next time. We're going to be doing something. I'm sure something exciting. Something we're going to do. Something that's got to do with fishing. But I appreciate you. You guys take care and take care of each other. And I will definitely, definitely catch you later.